If you're like me, you only make a leg of lamb once a year or maybe every other year. But every time I use this one recipe because it's foolproof, it goes with everything and it's holiday worthy. And I remember Bridget, when you developed this recipe, what, 15, 20 years ago? Yeah, I just got my driver's license <laughs> and I was hanging out at the mall and I thought I could really use some lamb. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been a while. Yeah, but this recipe has stood the test of time for sure. We wanted to get people to eat more lamb. People right. don't eat enough lamb. And the one lamb dish that they do like to eat often is rack of lamb with that crumb coating mm -hmm. on the exterior. So this is kind of an ode to the rack with a lot more lamb inside. We are going to coat this with a crumb coating, very easy to make. And this just dresses it up a little bit. So I've got here a piece of sandwich bread, just one, that's all we need. I'll tear it into small pieces. And we're using fresh breadcrumbs just because they're nice and fluffy even after they're baked later on. We're just looking for breadcrumbs here, not too fine. We want them to be a little coarse, so around 10 pulses should do it. All right, so that looks good. Not too broken down. I'm gonna transfer this back into that bowl that we had earlier. All right, we want lots of herbs in this. This is a quarter cup of finely chopped fresh parsley and three tablespoons of fresh rosemary, which sounds yeah. like a lot, but it really isn't. And rosemary and lamb is such a classic combination. Exactly. This is two tablespoons of finely chopped thyme, three peeled garlic cloves, and a teaspoon of extra virgin olive oil. You're gonna see a lot of this ingredient all throughout. All right, so the lid goes back on, and I'm gonna let this process for about a minute until it's really broken down and finely chopped. That's looking pretty darn good. Now I want a tablespoon and a half. We're gonna use that to season the interior of the lamb. And then the rest of this is going in with those breadcrumbs. Now before I mix this together, we'll have a couple more additions. This is an ounce or a half a cup of grated Parmesan cheese. Mm -hmm. Good seasoning, great flavor, and also it's gonna help the crust become cohesive. And I've got a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. Well, in this crumb coating, I have to say, I use on a lot of different meats because it's really versatile and tastes good on everything. All right, so that looks good. Enough of that. Let's move over to the star of the show. Mm -hmm. It's the lamb. This is going to serve about 68, so we like to use the half boneless leg of lamb. It's around three and a half to four pounds. And there's a reason that it's in this elasticated netting. It's because in order to make a boneless leg of lamb, they had to take out the bone. And that is a messy job if you've ever tried doing it yourself. There's a lot of different muscles attached to that bone. Now that is not bad That's at That's beautifully all. done. Now before we do anything here, I do want to start to trim away any excess fat. Lamb fat is one of the reasons that lamb tastes gamey to a lot of people. It has a very low smoke point. So it'll start to smoke before something like pork or beef fat would. Get a little bit of that fat off of the exterior on the top side as well. We do want to leave a little bit of the fat on the outside though. So you can see I'm just really leaving on this thin veneer fat. I think that's all I really want to take off at this point. Looks good. This was the exterior of the lamb. I'm going to put it with the interior side up. Now we want this to cook evenly and we want it to roll up easily. We're going to try to even this out. I've got a piece of plastic wrap. It goes right on here. And I've got a meat pounder here. Sometimes mm. at home I'll use a rubber mallet for this job. Mm -hmm. Or a rolling pin. So I'm gonna pound this lamb to about an even thickness, around three quarter inch. I do wanna season the meat directly. So I've got two teaspoons more of the extra virgin olive oil, right all over everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And a teaspoon and a half of kosher salt and a half a teaspoon of black pepper. All right, let's just even that out a little bit. All right, so now Let's bring up that herb paste. Again, that was one and a half tablespoons of that. I'm going to spread it out pretty evenly. I do want to keep a little bit of a border about an inch away from the edge. It's a good goal to aim for. So we're going to roll this up and tuck any pieces under. And then just start to roll this way up too. The fat is all ah. exposed like that. All right. Now we're going to tie it. Got six pieces of twine. We're going to space them about one and a half inches apart. Don't want to squeeze it too tight, but enough to be secure. The idea is that we're training it to stay in a compact form. So I wanna cut off any excess twine here. Just leave a little bit. Now you can actually let this sit in the fridge for a few hours, but we're gonna cook it right away. I do wanna do some last minute seasoning. So I've got another teaspoon and a half of kosher salt. Roll it over. And another half a teaspoon of black pepper. Same thing all over. 
And then finally, a tablespoon more of the extra virgin olive oil. Coat it all over. I'm gonna do a quick cleanup and then we'll move on. All right, so we are gonna cook this. We're gonna get a little bit of color on the roast itself before we add the crust. And we're gonna use the skillet to do that. So I have a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil in this 12 inch skillet. Heating it over medium high heat until it just starts to smoke. I'm gonna brown it on all sides. Squish it into the pan there. It's about two minutes per side, 10 minutes total. That's a beautiful piece of lamb, Bridget. All right, so I'm gonna turn this on its side. You just wanna get a little color on both ends. Just about 30 seconds per side. All right, so now, moving this over to a rack over a rimmed baking sheet. And we're gonna put this into a 375 degree oven. And that is lower than a lot of leg of lamb. Sometimes you put leg of lamb into a 400, 450 degree oven. And what that causes is any fat to start to render and it hits the pan and it smokes in the oven. We engineered this to get people to eat lamb, so <laughs> no gaminess. So 375 for about 30 minutes, and we're looking for an internal temperature between 105 to 110. All right, now I think mm. we're ready to put on our breadcrumb coating, but I do want to take a temp. 108, nicely done. All right, now I do want to get it off of this rack. That rack and the sheet pan are pretty hot, so mm -hmm. I'm going to move over to our carving board here. And now I'm going to gently release, release the hounds. <laughs> I'm gonna release the twine, just cut it, because the basic structure here is set. All right, I'm being gentle. I'm trying not to disturb the structure here too much. It can start to unravel a little mm. bit. And the great thing about crumb coating, it's kind of like buttercream on a cake. It hides all sins. In order to get this crumb coating to stick, we need a glue. We're going with Dijon mustard, yep. as they do with a rack of lamb. So this is a tablespoon of Dijon. You don't need to be too neat about it, or you don't need to be neat at all. <laughs> but I am going to move this closer because I want to start to pack these crumbs on the mm. outside. Mm -hmm. And really, I want to get into all the sides and use my hands to really adhere it. This is such a forgiving recipe, mm -hmm. too. If the meat starts to unravel a little bit, hey, that's just a space for more crumbs. That's it. All right, how's that looking? This is Messy enough good. for you? Yes. So this is going to go back onto our rack. This is gonna go back into that 375 oven, and this time it only needs to be in there for about 10, 15 minutes. We're gonna get that top nice and brown, breadcrumbs all crispy. Oh, gorgeous. Mm. Oh, thanks. Oh, you mean the lamb. I got it, okay. <laughs> I always fall for that. We're looking for 125 now. There we go. So we're hitting right around 128. And that is perfect because we want medium rare. Now, transfer this up to... Nice and gentle. Nice and gentle, a carving board. And we're gonna let this rest before we cut into it. All right, 20 minutes, the lamb has rested. Well, this is the best part, the serving. No bone, beautiful crumbs on top. Gorgeous color of the meat. Oh, yeah. So we're cutting it into about half inch slices. You don't wanna go too thin here. You wanna make sure people get a good amount of crumbs. Mm. Just that little bit of herb, right, going through the center. As with any long, narrow piece of meat, when you roast it, the ends are slightly more done than the middle, which is perfect for a crowd, because some people like it a little more done and some people like it a little rare. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Look at how tender that is. Mm -hmm. The lamb mm. is so perfectly cooked and I love the breadcrumbs and that little bit of rosemary, not overpowering. And you know, that more moderate oven too. There's not that funky gaminess that a lot of people associate with leg of lamb. Right. Because there wasn't all the smoke coming out of the oven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, and right in the middle where you get that herb paste. Mm-hmm. That's the payoff. Mm-hmm. Oh, Bridget, I love this recipe. Thank you. You bet. So there you have it. If you want to make this time-tested recipe for boneless leg of lamb, buy a boneless half leg, and after trimming and pounding the roast, rub the inside with a paste made of fresh herbs, then tie it back up into a tidy package. Sear it quickly on the stovetop, then roast for about half an hour before removing the ties and adding the crumbs. Roast for 10 to 15 minutes longer, then be sure to let rest before serving. From America's Test Kitchen to your kitchen, the ultimate recipe for roast boneless leg of lamb. Seriously, it's the only recipe you need for lamb. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.